Much like other Naughty Dog titles, The Last of Us Part II is littered with Easter eggs, from references to the previous game to, well, other games from the studio. Let's take a look at such Easter eggs here. Spoilers lay within for those who haven't finished the story, so be warned. Chernobyl At one point, you'll find a number of notes written by Boris, who is well known for his archery. This eventually leads to his house, among other things. If you explore the Hillcrest neighborhood and enter the store near the van, with a banner for the WLF rules to follow draped over it, you'll even find an archery trophy that Boris won. Interestingly enough, his full name is Boris Legasov. Sound familiar? That's because of the characters from the TV show Chernobyl named Boris Sherbina and Valerie Legasov. Considering that director Johan Rennick is working on the pilot for The Last of Us TV show, it's definitely more than just a coincidence. Hotline Miami For those who didn't see the deep dive before the game's launch, it's possible to find a PlayStation Vita with Hotline Miami on it. When traveling underwater to enter the hospital in Seattle, you'll emerge behind a woman playing on the Vita. Listen closely and Moon's Hydrogen can be heard playing. Examine the handheld afterwards to actually see the game, though sadly, it's unplayable. Dr. Uckman Trading Card As you progress through the game, there are a variety of trading cards for various fictional heroes and villains to collect. One of them, the Tesseractor, seems to be a reference to the Tesseract in Marvel's cinematic universe. However, if you explore downtown Seattle, you'll eventually happen upon a card for Dr. Uckman, who stated to be very smart. If the art and name didn't give it away, this is a reference to the game director, Neil Druckmann. PS3 while out on patrol in the first chapter, make sure to investigate the various houses. You may pop into a living room with a PlayStation 3 and some boxes for Uncharted 2 and Jack and Daxter, also made by Naughty Dog. Don't worry if you miss it, the console can be spotted in a number of different houses. Now where are all the Xbox consoles, we wonder? Jack X Combat Racing Jack and Daxter's appearances don't end there. When exploring in Chapter 4, you'll come across an old arcade. There are a variety of cabinets here, but one that should immediately stick out is Jack X Combat Racing, which originally launched for the PS2. Fun fact, Amy Hennig, who left Naughty Dog before The Last of Us came out, directed this game while Druckmann was a programmer for it. The Turning If you look around the same arcade venue, you'll find a cabinet for The Turning. This was spotted in The Last of Us and The Last of Us Left Behind. The protagonist, Angel Knives, is still very much front and center for the one-on-one -on -one fighter. Just like in Left Behind, the cabinet doesn't work, though it's not that much of a big deal this time around. Jack and Daxter Collection One more Jack and Daxter Easter egg pops up in Seattle, and this time it's for the Jack and Daxter Collection, which originally launched for the PS3 in 2012. It would be released for the PS Vita in June 2013, again just months before the outbreak. It's not hard to miss, just walk around the stadium and it will appear naturally. Precursor Orb one last Jack and Daxter Easter egg couldn't hurt, right? This time it's a precursor orb that's found in one of the rooms upstairs, though it's referred to as a strange relic. The precursor orb serves as the currency in Jack and Daxter games, even popping up in Jack X Combat Racing and The Lost Frontier. To the surprise of no one, it also appeared in the Uncharted series as a strange relic. 0451 there are a number of saves to unlock throughout the game, but the combination for one is very special. It's 0451, which has cropped up throughout the history of gaming. First appearing in System Shock, it's been in all of the Deus Ex games and Dishonored. It was actually the key code used for Looking Glass Studios Cambridge office. After the studio, its employees would scatter to a number of different studios, planting the coveted 0451 wherever they could until it became an industry tradition. Death Stranding? Upon exploring a jewelry store, you'll come across two hands joined together and stretched open. Clearly, this is a Death Stranding Easter egg, depicting the chiral crystals that are formed when a catcher BT has been defeated, right? However, it's also likely just a jewelry holder. Yes, they actually look like this in real life. Maybe Death Stranding took inspiration from it? Either way, Kojima's bizarre epic may be the first thing that comes to mind. J.K. Rowling's Note This one's a little tough to spot. It's in a room with a safe. Look off to the side on the desk, which has a picture of a dog. 
You can examine the envelope by entering photo mode, and while the words are still blurry, they're a perfect match for one of J.K. Rowling's written notes. It says, Now Vol is trying to get Harry to H of P. Joel and Sarah Joel had a rough time when the outbreak hit, but life before it wasn't so bad. At one point, you'll come across a picture of Joel with his daughter Sarah. The latter can be seen on a football field, holding up a trophy. Happier times to be sure, though given their respective ages in the photograph, it seems the outbreak wasn't too far off. Warhammer 40k and Dungeons and Dragons Venturing through the apartments in Seattle will reveal a rather interesting tabletop setup, complete with miniatures and books. The miniatures themselves resemble Warhammer 40k, but the books immediately evoke Dungeons & Dragons. With a d20 dice and Game Master setup, it makes you wonder exactly what kind of tabletop RPG was being played. Greg Nicotero One of the guns in the game, a semi-auto pistol, is manufactured by Nicotera. That seems incredibly close to Greg Nicotero's name. Nicotero is famous for special effects makeup on George Romero's classic Day of the Dead, while also serving as special makeup effects supervisor and executive producer for The Walking Dead TV series. Given that both The Last of Us and The Walking Dead deal with the infected, the similarities may not be completely off base. And that wraps it up. If you like what we are doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon. That way you will never miss out on any of our videos.